Welcome back this morning with this charity in roots through our social justice context. We'll have our first panel on refugees and movement of peoples on the way. We welcome also all the people that are following us on streaming. So welcome back also, especially thanks to the communication team and it's been working so hard. Soraya, Dani, well, the rest of the team no, who are working so, so hard on these days. <laughs> well, this morning, like yesterday, we have the closing seminar. And I think some days ago, Luis asked me, Alberto, what does it mean, this closing seminar? I have to do, make something uh, new, is what does it mean, seminar? And is another speech, or what can we do, no? And uh, I told him, it's a good question, Luis, it's a good question. Um, so, well, I, I was making some kind of fun of these things, no? But uh, the thing is, we are trying, um, at some point to get, or Luis is going to help us, no? to recollect, to highlight the key elements that, uh, yeah, what we've been talking about, refugees and migrants today, can be connected and can help us as social apostolate in Europe. He will do it in a different words, but much better than me. And just to let you know, although probably most of you know, know uh, Luis, he's the social delegate of the Spanish uh, Jesuit province. He's been working a lot no, in the social apostolate, in different no, networks, especially with Savian Network and Entre Culturas for many years. But also he has a deep no understanding of the reality of social apostolate. He's in the steering committee of the social apostolate in yeah, yeah, from the last, I don't know, four or five years, Luis? Yeah. So so welcome, Luis. And he will explain us a, a little bit what are the, what does it mean a closing seminar for him. Thank you, Luis. So good morning to you all and thank you, Alberto, for the presentation. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to talk much, <laughs> hopefully. Uh, I mean, after this very intense morning with so many rich uh, inputs and insights uh, from the previous panel and probably in all the small groups, the sharing in the small groups, the idea of this moment is not to add new elements. <laughs> I mean, we, we already had plenty of elements this, this morning that probably touch us and energized us. So the idea is to, all together, to try to, to wrap up and to summarize a little bit wh which are the main elements that can help us here in Europe as the social apostolate of the Society of Jesus. At this moment, we are living from all what we have shared in this morning, which is uh, really touching us in this moment that we are living, uh, and what are the calls that we can hear in some way from the spirit uh, leading us as European social apostolate in this moment of renewal uh, in which we are uh, involved. So that's the idea. I will try to help uh, this this effort, and later we will have some time for, for open dialogue and, and, and sharing. So we are here in, in Loyola, and that, that is something that is really important of this Congress, the, the context and the moment. We are here in Loyola, we're in the anniversary of Ignatius' conversion, so uh, I thought, let, let us, Ignatius, help us in this, in this exercise. Uh, 
Ignatian spirituality is always uh, is, is always mm, inviting us to look to reality, to contemplate reality. God is active and present in the deep in the deep uh, lay of reality, and from there He is calling us from the suffering of the people and from the signs of hope that we can we see and we recognize in in, in reality. So. As you all know, in one of the most uh, well-known uh, meditations of the spiritual exercises, Ignatius invites us to look at the world as the way the Trinity is looking at it. It's the, contem the contemplation of incarnation. So that's, that's the proposal, to try to do this exercise of uh, wrapping up this morning through that uh, process, with, through those two steps that Ignatius is proposing in this contemplation. The first one, as, as you all know, is to look at the world, at the entire world, to see the various persons, uh, those on the surface of the earth in such, in such variety, in dress as in actions, some white and others black, some in peace and others, and others in war, some weeping and others laughing, some wells, others ill, some being born, other dying. That is the uh, our reality. So um, oh, I forgot. I forgot this. So s some elements to, that may help us to to look to look at our world and our reality in Europe as the way the 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 Lord is looking at it. So we we also can keep in mind this this invitation, this prayer from 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 Arupi. Teach me your way of looking at people. I would, I would like to meet you as you really are, since your image changes those with whom you come into contact. So that is the idea that when we look at the world, we are changed by the Lord who is already active there. So I think that the first impression when we look at the world right now and we look at Europe is the sense that we are deeply, deeply touched. Uh, by the reality we are living right now. It's the war that is again in Europe when we never thought that we would see it again. And the suffering of so many people here in Europe, again. I mean, it's, it's now and here. We are talking about migrants and refugees and we are not having a theoretical debate. We are talking about something that is happening in front of us. It's exactly as the parable of the Good Samaritan, the wounded man is really in front of us. Will we see it, see him, stop and take care of him, or will we see it and pass through? This is the moment, clearly. And the, it's not just a, an emergen emergency and extraordinary situation in Ukraine. This is, this is really extraordinary, but we are in a more structural crisis. And Europe is facing this, this reality of migrants and refugees coming to Europe. And as uh, Amaya reminded uh, us, the Mediterranean Sea has become the most dangerous migratory route in the whole world. It's here in Europe. It's not anywhere. Sometimes we look at the at the wall in the US and Mexico, and we are, ah, but here in Europe, we have the most dangerous route for migrants and refugees. So it's not just Ukraine. And Ignatius in this contemplation, he, he invites us to look to the world carefully, not just the, like the big picture, but to look at people, concrete people, how they dress, what are they doing, so look into the, into the details I think that is clearly not to avoid com the complexity of the world. The world is complex. And when you look into the details, you, you face the complexity of, the, of reality. So uh, if we want to face that complexity, we have to, to, to realize that it is, it is not just a, a, a European question, this question of migrants and refugees. I think uh, Michael, in, this, in his speech this morning, put it very clearly. We have to keep a, a global perspective. We have to keep a global perspective. 
mostly because if we forget the global perspective, we forget the root causes of migration and refugees. So we forget an uh, important part of, of the picture. And the complexity is, it, it is not only a problem of Ukraine, it is not only a problem of refugees, it is, it is the reality of people moving. It is the reality of people, many people moving for different, from di for different reasons. And in this complex world, it's not easy anymore to define very precisely who are strictly refugees people, who are people who are willing to move to other places, and who are those forcedly migrant people who are in, the, in that gray area that is not easily to, to define. And, and I think that also in this, in, in this contemplation, the invitation of Ignatius is not, is not only not to avoid co uh, complexity, but it, it, it is also not to accept the contradictions. People are dying and people are, are, are being born. People are laughing and people are weeping. That's the contradiction. And here in Europe, we have to, we really have to face the, we really have to address the fact that migration is a tough political issue, a controversial social question, and it causes division in our societies, in our church, in the society of Jesus, in our institutions, and in our communities. It, it is true. I mean, it, it happens. It happens in, 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 in us. Probably it has to do with many things, but I think this morning two, two, two elements uh, I mean, came to my mind. The first one is the idea that I mean, there, is, there is a kind of failure in the promises coming from globalization and technological revolution. I mean, 20 years ago, there were promises. Globalization is going to bring prosperity, social rights, I mean, reality now is that youth people are having a lot of tension and difficulties. The workers in m most of our cities and, and our countries are going through tough moments. And most, most of all, people have fear in the future. People have fear in the future. And the reaction against migration has to do with it. I'm not justifying it. I am just trying to identify what is, what is happening. And something that touched me, uh, that Father Baggio mentioned it, we lack communities. And this fear uh, has to do with the lack of communities, with the lack of deep and solid links between us, which are the protection net that we all need to survive and to, I mean, to have a, a, a meaningful uh, life. So we have these, these signs of death, if you want, or we can see those, these people weeping. But we can also see, we, ha we have this morning identified many signs of hope, many signs of hope. The first one, f for sure, is the, the energy, the strength, and the capacity of the refugees themselves and the migrants. That's a source of enormous hope for all of us. We find also a second one, which has been very much uh, mentioned this morning, is that in, in this topic, in this controversial topic, the church has a clear position. And the pope is, I mean, he's leading the church uh, in, in that position. Now we face a different question than the last 50 years in the church. And now the question is, are we following the pope or are we leaving him alone in these kind of things? I mean, we used to say the Society of Jesus is the front line of the church. Now probably the, the Pope is very much the front line. Is on, are, are we following him? Uh, I mean, it's, a, it's quite a, 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 a different uh, context. And another, and another sign of hope we clearly have identified is some years ago, the, the, the Society of Jesus made, made a strong decision Refugees and migrants are going to be a priority for us. And after 40 years or 40 something years from that, now we, have, we really have set in place 
an enormous network of initiatives and works uh, working with white migrants and refugees in so many places. We have that. We, of course, we have GRS. We have GRS in the global, in the global world, and we have GRS in many countries here in, in Europe. We have GRS, which is actively working in the borders, in the detention centers, in the places where, the, where life is, in, is at risk. We have many social centers, parishes, schools, working with migrants, supporting integration in the, in the societies. We have universities and social centers reflecting and doing analysis and research on, on, on migration. I mean, we have presence in, from Nador in the border of Morocco and Spain to Poland, from Greece to the UK. We have presence in, in those places. And we have places in, the, in most of the places of origin of the refugees and migrants through the work of, of years. We have set in place a very rich network of initiatives. So this is the first step just of the, of the contemplation of incarnation, to look, to look at the world. And here are some ideas coming from, 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 this, from this morning. The, 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 second, the second invitation, or the second step in the, in, the, in, the, in the contemplation of incarnation is, is, is to contemplate how the three divine persons look at all the plane or circuit of all the world, full of men, and how seeing that all were going down to hell, it is determined in the eternity that the second person shall become man to save the human race. So to look at how God is looking at the world and acting in the world. That's the invitation. And I think that from maybe it can help us, uh, not only Ignatius, but also Arupe, I think in, in this topic is, is, is impossible to talk about, about this and to look at uh, what can we do at the end? What can we do? How can we contribute to this dynamism coming from God uh, himself in, uh, saving the world? I think Arupe has given us so, so much light. And in this moment, maybe we can feel, you know, in Europe, the Society of Jesus, we are diminishing. We don't have much energy. We don't have much capacity. We are merging uh, provinces. We are uh, uh, reducing communities. We are closing works. And now you are asking us to, I mean, to increase our work with migrants. That's not easy. I mean, so maybe we can look to Arupe and go back to, 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 the, to the crisis at the end of the 70s in the, in the, in the Pacific coast in Asia, and the answer, this very famous, I learned it from, from Danny, uh, this very famous, I don't know, it, it was not a letter, it was a telegraph, from Arrupe to, to all the provincials. What are we going to do? What are you going to do? And as you know, less than one year later, GRS was set up. So again, I mean, we have gone through, through these situations in which we think we can do nothing else. We don't have the energy, the capacity. But I think that, that our feeling is that, that that is not the final word. We have to look a little bit deeper in that. So four elements that may help us in, the, in that. What, what else can, can we do? What else can we do? The, the first one is to, to go deeper. I was very touched by, by Michael's uh, speech this morning and how he began with his uh, spiritual experience of the encountering God in the, in the encounter with, with the refugees and migrants. And I think if we look back in our own lives, probably we, can, we, we realize uh, of similar experiences we have gone through. The experience that we follow, we follow Jesus who was a refugee. That is very powerful. We have to remind that Jesus, 
Vamos. Jesus himself eh, was a refugee. And, and that's not only an image. It's something that we have really experienced in so many times. So the encounter with the struggles and the hopes with the suffering and the life of the refugees is a source of a spiritual renewal. And if we want to ask ourselves these questions, what else can we do to, to address these invitations from the UAP number two to work with the poor, in particular work with the migrants, what else can we do here in Europe? I think the first step is to go back to this spiritual experience. Because from there, we will get the fresh water that will renew our practices, our projects, our structures, or whatever. This, the, second, the second element, uh, I think it's very, very, it's very powerful, this, you remind, you remind, we all remind this image of Abraham and Sarah in, in, I mean, in the, in the oaks of Mambre, 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 Mambre? I don't know in English is Mambre also. Mm. Uh, Mambre, do you remember that? He was sitting there under the sun and three strangers came and he, they just welcomed them. Welcomed them in a so generous way. I mean, so, so incredible, so, so much. And that, that, that experience, that experience remind us we are not talking just about what else can we do. Is what else, how, the question is more, how do we have to change ourselves? It, do, it not only has to do with the kind of things we do, with the works we do, with the, with the missions we carry on. It not only has to do with that, it has to do with our life, with our way of living, with, with our way of understanding our lives. If we limit our answer to just the kind of uh, uh, works and initia practical initiatives that we are going to do, then we limit ourselves a lot. When we put, we try to put um, all, all our capacities, all our lives, all the aspects of, of our lives in a very humble way and a, in a very limited way, when we try to put it in the same dynamism of Abraham and Sarah, then again, we are opening the gate of new opportunities, new ideas, new projects, something the unex unexpected that, that may happen. It has to do with the, with the importance of accompanying, putting not just our mission, our work, but our life in, at risk in some way. It has to do with the idea of accompanying that is so, so important uh, uh, to us. And something that uh, after this morning, uh, I mean, I, it touched me a little bit. I think there is a strong call for, for more radicality. I mean, we are here, and here in Ignatius changed completely his life. Jose Ignacio, the first day, started saying, this is the kind of things we do every week two or three times. I mean, we think we, were, we are going to change our lives <laughs> two or three times every week. But he really did it. He really did it. And, and, he, and the way he did this, he became a pilgrim. Are we ready to be a pilgrim? And we, now we have the, this invitation from UAP number two. Walk with the poor. Are we walking with them? Like pilgrims walking with them? Are we really putting at risk our lives? Some kind of radicality? I think it's the, uh, it, I mean, it's a moment. It, it's a moment in which I think people are in need of signs of hope. And only this kind of very radical response to the suffering of the people can, can bring this kind of hope people are uh, looking for. And, well, here, this, here is one. I, I like this. It's, this is one community here in Spain, in, in Burgos. You can see, I mean, it, it, it's, it, it's a normal Jesuit community. I mean, you don't have extraordinary people. And the, the, the age, the medium age is the medium age of the province here in Spain. And they are hosting a couple of young African uh, migrants here. 
and it, ha it, it is changing the life of the community. It is changing in so many ways. They are not doing much, just hosting them, accompanying them. Okay, so the, the, third, the, third, uh, the third element that may help us in answering what else can we do is this idea of, of uh, can we go back? Yes, this one. Uh, this idea of serving, uh, I mean, this idea of serving, what else can we do? At, at the end, this, it has to do with the, with, with the magis. What are we going to do for Christ? It has to do with, with that. Just very three, three, I think many ideas came from, from the, the panel this morning. Just three elements. One is we have a, a beautiful uh, set of initiatives in the very frontiers, in the borders, in the detention centers, in the, in the, well, where there is life at risk. We should care them. At this moment, we should care them. We should put energy in caring them. We should send people resources to keep them alive and able to, to really to be an active uh, presence there. The second one is the importance of integration. I think that is the, the fourth uh, verb or word from the Pope, as Amaya reminded us. And I think we tend sometimes to forget it because it's the it's the, the more invisible. I mean, it's, it's probably not an emergency. It's long term. It's not easy to do. It's a quiet work, but it's so needed, so needed, the, integra the, the need to integration. I mean, and, and, and a couple of elements for that. One is the, the, the role of the community in integration, and we have plenty to share on that, the role of the community building communities that is key for integration in our diverse so european societies and the and the second connected with that is i mean integration means working with the poor the migrant refugees and the local people all working together and it has to do with probably it it, it is it is a task for that goes beyond uh, GRS, that for sure is, year, is, is part of the GRS mission. But I, I think there we have a clear role. We all as social apostolate, our social centers working in the neighborhoods. I mean, in the neighborhoods, there are migrants and local kids work together, building those community, helping the, the integration. And the, oh, I, I forget, this, this, one's, this one was about integration here in, in Javier. And the last one, the last element is, is collaboration, collaboration. I think that was mentioned a lot. We have, we, we have already so many initiatives in place. The, the main question is how can we tap on the possibilities of working together more closely? Several of you mentioned Ukraine is a, even in this dramatic moment, is a good practice that we are uh, being able to, in, in which we are already like trying to see the benefits of collaboration and working together. I, I, I'm not going to explain it here. Uh, I mean, in, in, this is something that from the Secretariat of Social Justice and Ecology, they, they, they developed during the last year and is the, what we call the, the, the process of mission, is the steps we take to carry on the mission. A company, serve, research, awareness raising, advocacy. We all have a role in that process. None of us can do all of them. So we need collaboration. When we look at the, at the whole society and the mission we can put in one of these steps, all the work GRS is doing, the parishes are doing, the social centers, the universities, the schools, whatever. This is just a model. It's just a way that may help us in this process of collaboration that we already know that is not easy to put into practice. It's not easy. So those three, those three elements uh, in for what else can we do? This, the, these three elements ha have to do with, with doing things. And the last, the last, the fourth one, the fourth, uh, so I have talked about this, this deepen the spiritual experiences, the experience of working with, with refugees and migrants. The second one is putting our life, not only our work, but our life in, at risk. 
the third one has to do with uh, doing th new things or doing things also in a different way. And the last one has to do with this idea of reconciliation and, and advocacy. I mean, it has to do with some, probably has to do with the idea of trying to be in some way a sign of hope for the people. Mikhail was mentioned this morning, reconciliation is an individual process. Advocacy is a public one. Uh, probably it has to do, it, I mean, those two are connected. Um, I think this, this image is very powerful. It's not, it's not here in Europe, it's in the US and Mexico border. Maybe we could have something like this. It's a sign, it's a strong sign uh, image that brings reconciliation, hope, and also is prophetic and is a sign uh, that in some ways uh, a way of doing advocacy. And, and this final image, is, I like it very much, is a Rupnik image in, is in the Canary Island. It's an image of the world led by a woman, led by Mary. So it's a community of equals. And that, that thing, that, that's, that's the big challenge of, of, of the end. How can we build those communities of, of equals? So, so just this, this second step, contemplate the Trinity and taking into account the invitation coming from, from UAP number two, what else can we do? So to deepen the spiritual experience, and from there may come novelty, to put our life, not only our mission, uh, into, I mean, to put it in, in, in play as Sarah and Abraham, to try to, do, to take care in some things we can do, uh, 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 collaboration, to care the works we have at the borders and at, I mean, at the frontiers, and integration and community, and at the end, reconciliation and advocacy in you know, a way to bring signs of hope to people. Thank you, Luis, for help us to deep, no, again, in this renewal no, that we've been bringing no, through the whole Congress. Uh, yeah, it's always like having this experience of going and contemplate, as you were telling us, no, like the, no, the Trinity, no, and with all this reality. So we have now time also to, as uh, Luis was saying at the very beginning, to share at least like 10, 15 minutes to to go a little bit deeper on on these issues. Um, yeah. It's, um, probably we can even have like one minute like to help us no? settle some of these ideas, the things, and if you want to share, if you want to even have some comment questions, please uh, raise your hands and our companions that are over here can, with a red shirt can help you. Please give the microphone over here. Austin, yeah. Um, thank you. I just remembered because in our small group, what came out was the theme of the conversion of the church more than the conversion of society, actually, that we have to begin with the conversion of our own congregations. And Father Bajo spoke very powerfully about that. 
Um, I remembered that back in, I think it was 2014, Pope Francis said, did he not, that every parish should receive, open its doors to a refugee family. And then we've heard nothing more. I said to Cardinal Jeunet, I think it was a, couple, a year or two ago before COVID, what happened to that? And Journey looked at me and he said, huh, you should remind us, write something about it. And then I didn't. <laughs> Is this the moment to resurrect that request made by the Holy Father that to be now repeated by every bishop's conferences? It should be a demand that every parish at least discerns the possibility synodally of receiving a refugee family. Thank you. Uh, Luis, you mentioned the failure of community, uh, and I think this is, and, and we're living in a technocratic uh, society now where we, we tend to operate as individuals with, with devices and machines and not as communities with each other. Um, in what way, okay, this means we're less welcoming, but also there is less of a social reality to welcome people into. Could you say something more about that, please? And maybe some signs of hope with that as well. Thank you. Marius. Thank you, Luis, for your thoughtful presentation. You encouraged us to be more radicals. You addressed us a call for more radicality, but we are already living in a very radicalized uh, society with uh, many radicals which are against migrants, against integrating foreigners into their countries. How can we understand this call for radicality? Thank you. Yeah, Jerome Mamaya. Um, I, I think in GRS we have a very nice uh, example of uh, being close to the people and with them. And uh, as you said, and I think it's very interesting for the remaining part of uh, social apostolate, we have to think about that. And uh, we have, uh, uh, th this was asked uh, at the beginning and we often say, let, uh, let us, uh, we have to be with the poor and march with the poor. And I feel it's quite a big difficulty in social apostolate, actually, uh, for some manage better. So I think we should work it properly. I mean, uh, this is a question. We receive it. We have it for long. Now, how can we work it? And how can we work for the Jesuits? And how can we work for uh, all the lay people who are working uh, uh, together? Uh, it is the question may be different in the situations. It's e I would say it's easier for Jesuits to really join uh, and live with the people. But uh, we have to think uh, for all of us how we can do it. And we have to work it. I, I really ask that we do this work and we see what has been uh, uh, tried, uh, what is the experience, and uh, how we can make some uh, steps uh, ahead in that, uh, that direction. Because otherwise, we should stop saying it all the time because it's really bothering. Thank you, Diego. Uh, Amaya, please. Uh, thank you so much, Luis. Very inspiring. And um, the question of radicality, so important. And the communities of equ equals, no? And my point is actually about how to, to involve, include more uh, refugees and migrants in our staff. Because I think in my experience, it's something that it's really rich. We sometimes uh, think that they need this or they, they need that or they, or they think this or they fear that. But having them close to us, it's such a richness. We have a, we have a, um, a, a Syrian um, refugee in our staff in the international office. And, and I think it's, it's, it's a great richness while from Aleppo. Uh, I actually told him I was here with so many Jesuits and uh, collaborators, and he just wrote back saying the following. Ha, 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 hope you come back normal. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Amaya. We'll go. we'll go for the first round, if you don't, oh, okay. 
Okay. Uh, uh, Jose, I just want to say a very big thank you to you and also to the speakers in the morning. I did some um, it, um, work uh, for um, the, the refugee services as, as a young person many years ago, and now I'm working just in the field of ecology. And it was so inter it was such a great reminder for me today that there are so many things in the field of ecology and ecotestics which, which I can learn from from the refugee service. So many things about your structures, about reaching out, walking with the people, and I think there's so many things we can learn from each other, others, and and it's so much we can learn, and we must never separate that from each other. Uh, and and I really hope that that we can learn and exchange more. Um, because ecology and, and, and justice, it's so closely interconnected. And I really hope that, that our organizations can, can work much closer together that because it's the same structures and the same solutions we are seeking. Thank you so much. It was a great reminder, and um, I'm very grateful for that. Thank you. So, Liu, Luis, thank you. You can yeah, share a little bit about these questions. It would be great. A little bit, but. Sure, I, I don't have the answers. I mean, it's, um, the first point was about community and the lack of community and the, the importance and the impact of that. I, I agree with you. It goes much beyond the, the hosting of refugees and the integration of refugees. It's, it's, I think that, that is a, a great challenge uh, uh, for our European culture. I mean, it's, it's the consequence of the individualism, the, mm, the post-modernity post or the, the late modernity culture or whatever. I mean, th there is a, and, and the, I don't know, the failure, but the crisis of the traditional ways of building communities in our societies, the, the mediations we used to have, they uh, are no longer uh, attractive for the people. So how do we build a strong bonds between us? Because the, I mean, people feel alone. People feel alone. The, I don't know in other countries, but here in Europe, uh, here in Spain, we have a huge problem with the youth and the problems of loneliness and mental, and mental health issues. And that's another consequences of the same. And for sure, it's impossible to I mean, it's impossible to host and to integrate com uh, migrants and refugees if, you do if we don't have communities that can do that, that kind of work. On the other side, I see these migrants and, re and refugees as an opportunity to rebuild our communities in a different way. Probably they have a different culture. For them, the importance of communities is much stronger. And probably it, 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 it's not easy at all, but I, I think... I think that that could be a, 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 sign, a sign of hope. And I think that we, as, as the church in general, we have a lot to share on that. I mean, we have a lot of experience in living together, in community, in communion, in a diversity, in the diversity of the church. It's not that we are an example always, but I think we have something to share uh, to the to the to the whole society, European society. The second one is on, on radicality. I, uh, I don't know, I just have the sense that this, this is a time for not being shy, for not being, I mean, this is a time where people are as, really are lacking hope. So how can we bring hope? And sometimes it's this kind of signs. I like this the language of the Pope, which is a language of science more, I mean, because we need, we need that kind of things. And the, the, because the, 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 the radicality we, we, can, we can imagine if we, if we accept our fragility and personal limitation, the, fragile, the, the, the radicality is very symbolic one. We are not going to change uh, everything, but we can be we can practice hospitality in a radical way, opening our houses. For instance, that, uh, we will have just one person, one family, maybe for some weeks. Maybe that's nothing, or that's a lot. It depends, because it shows that a different way of doing things can be done, and that we are happy, and that we, and it's a, a meaningful experience, and that kind of things. This radicality in, in, in hospitality, in, in reconciliation, 
I agree. I, I mean, the kind of radicality is not a radicality that uh, 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 highlights confrontation. It's a radicality in reconciliation, for instance. In, that 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 kind of that that kind of things. I really think we need to do that, and that part of that radicality has to do with put, putting our lives at, at risk, living with, uh, try to share our life with the with the poor. Uh, that's not easy, and that's something that we lay men and women have left to the Jesuits. That's part of that. that, that that's in the in the side of the Jesuits to live with the poor. We we just work. We don't. I mean. And, and now I think that I, need, I think that we have the question: in, in which ways we can do that? In France, Jerome, you have the welcome experience. For instance, it's a very, I mean, a very humble but very powerful experience of people hosting in, in refugees in, in in their own houses. We can imagine things like that. I think that's 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 a, a, a challenge, and as Jerome was mentioning, we should reflect uh, on it together. I fully agree with Amaya the importance of including refugees and migrants in in in, in our in our staff in our institutions. I know that in many years national offices and also and the welcome, welcome experience, experience. For instance, it's a very and I think in in, in Europe in the, in, the, in, the, in Brussels we also have it. And here in Spain, in in several SGM offices, uh, there are there are um, people migrant people and and it's very rich. Uh, for us, I really agree. And just the, the last thing, I think, I think something important is the uh, the last uh, the last person mentioned the that in, I mean the ecological issue. We are we are if we can say so, we are starting the path. And in the migration and refugees, we did it uh, several decades ago. And now the, the, we have to. I mean, to, what else can we do? Uh, what else? But we already started the path. So, but one uh, one important question is the structures. Is that's really important? We don't have time now. I think uh, the structures we had were very fruitful. I don't know if we need new structures. I mean, uh, 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 that help us to to promote this kind of collaboration that we are needing. Oh, the conversion of the church. Uh, yeah, sorry, yes, 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 because I, I, I thought I, I wrote here. May, maybe Father Bajo or Amaya can answer that. I, I, I well, I think, I, I guess that in, uh, in, in, in other countries in Europe is the same. But here in, in Spain, we have like a, a wave of uh, goodwill and solidarity with the Ukrainian crisis that probably is not very much uh, like reflected or deep but i mean we should i mean we should we should use it the, the best way we, we can so maybe this is an opportunity to open to open our parishes to open our centers something like that even if it's done in a very spontaneous way and not much reflected it could be an opportunity to i mean to start this this kind of change thank you luis thank you also to help us i think this congress also when when we were preparing these things now of deep renewal it was something also to help us to deep on this and um, make meaning no of our lives or of the apostolates just to yeah to finish is uh, also to thanks all the people who are uh, with us on the streamings is just a uh, a lady, a girl from, from Portugal, Rita Sacramento, that is now in uh, Casabella. She's writing to us and say, how great Luis is, is listen to you, no? And so also to feel that we are a big family no, on, on these issues and help us, no, all of us to make meaning. So thank you, thank you, Luis. Yes, a uh, chocolate to to thank you, Luis. <laughs> to help him to recover, no, for on these tough times. <laughs> thank you, Pete. Thank you. Okay, okay. Philip, Philip. Yeah, no, after. Please.